Today I'm going to show you how to clean up and refine a few different types of fertilizer into something more resembling proper chemical reagents. First up I have some calcium nitrate, which like most fertilizer is sold as off-white granules called prills. The main issue with most fertilizers is that they're far too dirty for use as reagents. But this calcium nitrate has a second problem in that it isn't actually calcium nitrate. If you look closely at the label or on the manufacturer's website, you can see that this product is actually something called calcium ammonium nitrate, or CAN for short. Calcium ammonium nitrate is vastly preferred in fertilizers as pure calcium nitrate is extremely hygroscopic and nearly impossible to crystallize. However, by adding calcium carbonate to ammonium nitrate, you can precipitate the hydrated double salt fairly easily. This fertilizer also has the advantage of being able to provide ammonia without being classified as an oxidizer by the Department of Transportation like pure ammonium nitrate. In any case, to make calcium ammonium nitrate into calcium nitrate, the first thing I did was to weigh out about 300 grams and dissolve it in some distilled water. Once the calcium ammonium nitrate had totally dissolved, a bunch of this disgusting oily brown crab floated to the top, which I was able to remove by passing it through a coffee filter. The filtrate was next poured back into a beaker and placed on a hot plate along with a stir bar. To this, I then added 20 grams of calcium hydroxide, which represents about double the amount I need for this reaction. The mixture is then heated to boiling under constant stirring for a couple hours. What's happening now is that when my 300 grams of calcium ammonium nitrate decahydrate dissolves in water, it forms 55.56 grams of calcium ions, 189.44 grams of nitrate ions, 5 grams of ammonium ions, and 50 grams of water molecules. The ammonium is what we're trying to get rid of here, and the 5 grams represents 0.278 moles, which is equal to the number of moles of can I started with. Adding calcium hydroxide under heat will force a reaction between one molecule of calcium hydroxide and two ammonium ions forming two molecules of water and two molecules of ammonia gas, leaving the calcium ion behind to react with two nitrate molecules forming an additional molecule of calcium nitrate. Ideally, this reaction will purge all ammonia from solution while also generating an extra 22.78 grams of calcium nitrate to bring the theoretical yield to 250.54 grams of pure calcium nitrate. Anyway, I kind of just kept boiling the mixture until no more ammonia gas was being generated, which can be tracked by holding litmus paper above the reaction mixture. Ammonia is extremely alkaline and will turn litmus paper blue. Once no more ammonia was being produced, I went ahead and removed all the excess calcium hydroxide by passing the mixture through a coffee filter. The filtrate was then returned to the beaker and boiled down until a gooey slime remained. Calcium nitrate is extremely hygroscopic, as I mentioned earlier, and virtually impossible to crystallize. To that end, the slime was transferred to another dish and baked in an oven at 100 degrees Celsius until it had dried completely. The resulting slab of calcium nitrate was broken apart, powdered, and weighed for a final mass of 214.91 grams, representing an 85.8% yield with most of the 14.2% loss being in transferring the calcium nitrate between containers. For the next chemical I'll be purifying, I've got this big bag of fertilizer grade urea. To purify this dirty urea into something resembling reagent grade, I'll be using simple recrystallization. This is the best method for urea given its very sharp solubility curve, making it very soluble in hot water and significantly less soluble in cold water. To this end, the first step is to once again dissolve the urea in water, but this time I'll be dissolving as much as I possibly can in a fixed volume of water, which in this case is about 250 milliliters. To do this, I simply dump in a bunch of urea and heat it under constant stirring until it all completely dissolves. Once all the urea does dissolve, I add more and repeat until essentially I'm out of space in my beaker. At this point, I pour the still hot urea solution through a coffee filter to remove the oily brown crap that seems to be a staple in all of these fertilizers. The filtrate is then returned back to a fresh beaker and quickly heated back to boiling before taking it off and allowing it to cool. As the urea solution cools, it will form long needle-like crystals that seem to start from the bottom of the beaker and move up to the top.
After the solution has been allowed to cool to room temperature, I break up the urea crystals as best I can and collect them by vacuum filtration. The resulting filtrate is next cooled to near freezing and the process is repeated. To get as much urea as possible, I then boiled the second filtrate down to around half of its initial volume and repeated the above recrystallizations. After the urea crystals have been collected, they now need to be dried. The issue with this is that excessively high temperature will cause urea to decompose, which in addition to destroying your product will produce a lot of toxic ammonia gas. Not only is this a problem, but urea tends to be able to redissolve itself in its own residual moisture if you try to heat it, and this will result in a solid, unworkable mass. The better strategy in my experience is to simply allow the urea to air dry in a room with the lowest humidity you can manage. Once the urea is sufficiently dry, it can be powdered in a mortar and stored. With this specific process, I didn't bother calculating yield as I really didn't even measure the mass of the crude urea I started with, and so had no baseline. Regardless though, I think this process worked very well in leaving me with a good amount of fairly pure urea that I feel much better about using in future projects. For my third and final fertilizer cleanup, I decided to try ammonium sulfate, which was probably the least satisfying and most tedious of all, which is why I saved it for last. This is because unlike urea, ammonium sulfate has a very shallow solubility curve. This means that a similar mass of ammonium sulfate will dissolve at high temperatures and low temperatures. That said, the only viable way to purify this crap is using evaporation, which is also the only viable way to purify sodium chloride for the same reason. In any case, to get started, I went ahead and dissolved as much ammonium sulfate as I could in a minimal volume of water, except this time I used 600 milliliters instead of 250. Once the hot solution of sodium sulfate had hit its saturation point, I went ahead and passed it through a coffee filter to remove the accursed brown slime, and then transferred the filtrate back to a large beaker. This was then allowed to sit for several days to allow the water to evaporate and during that time the ammonium sulfate began to climb up the sides of the beaker, over the top, back down the sides, and onto my table. This is a quality of some salts called efflorescence, which means to flower out in French. This is a pretty simple process, and essentially what happens is that the water, which contains a dissolved salt, migrates across the surface and then dries, leaving behind a coating of the salt. I'm honestly kind of surprised this doesn't happen more often with a larger variety of salts given the strong cohesive and adhesive properties of water. It's still really annoying to deal with, but all of the ammonium sulfate that had dried out this way is pretty much completely pure, and I went ahead and collected it by simply scraping it off the sides of the beaker. Additionally, a good deal of salt did crystallize out of solution, which was the intent, and I collected that by vacuum filtration. This process was repeated a couple more times over the course of the next few weeks until I was left with a mostly pure ammonium sulfate. Now, after more than a month from starting this project, here is some of what I collected. And here you can see the initial unpurified fertilizers alongside the purified versions below. I plan on using all of these in a variety of future videos given the broad usefulness of these salts, and I'll try to include a link to them once they're out. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting or useful, and as always, I want to thank all my incredible patrons for their generous contributions. Your support is vital and very appreciated. To everyone else, if you'd like to see more content like this, consider subscribing on TikTok, YouTube, Instagram, or even by becoming a patron yourself. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.